In this video, we're going to talk about how to write exponential equations, um, part one, because we're going to focus on the general form, or this form, a times b to the power of x. So let's take a look at some examples and understanding what this is. So when we have equations in the form y equals a times b to the power of x, we have to know what these values mean so we can find them. So a always represents your initial amount. It's what you start with. So in a situation, if I say the population has 100 people, well, a would be 100. If I say the bacteria starts with three cells, then a would be three. The b is your base. This is our common ratio. In other words, it's the number that you keep multiplying by over and over again. So if I say your money doubles, b would be two. If I say the amount of carbon has a half-life, b would be a half. If I say it increases by a factor of 1.5, b would be 1.5. So b is that number that you're repeatedly multiplying by when you look at the pattern. So now let's take, um, do some examples to actually write our equations. In this example, we're given a table to show us that the number of 20-year periods in relation to the number of coyotes. So the first thing we need to do is identify the values we're looking for. So we need A, that's our initial value, and we need B, that's our multiplier. So we want to write an equation that shows us the number of coyotes for X number of 20-year periods. Well, A is our starting amount. We can see that in year zero, there were 15 coyotes to begin with, so A is going to be 15. We need B, that's our multiplier. So basically, I'm looking for the pattern. What am I doing to go from 15 to 45, and then 45 to 135? And remember, it's a multiplier, so that's what I'm trying to see. We can see that we keep multiplying by 3 over and over again. So every 20 years, the number of coyotes triples. Now let's say that you couldn't tell that. You can't just look at that and say, oh, it's 3. The way we figure it out is if we don't know, we're going to take one y value and divide it by the one right before it. That's going to give us our common multiplier. So now that we have our initial value and our common multiplier, we can write our final equation by substituting these values in for a and b. So we end up with y equals 15 times 3 to the power of x. Now I can use this equation to find, to answer questions about it. So if I wanted to know, well, after 40 years, or, I don't know, 100 years from now, how many coyotes will there be? I can substitute in that time for x and solve for y. If they ask us to write it as a function, that just means we're going to replace y with our fancy function notation for y, which is just f of x. It all means the same thing, though, and I can still use it to evaluate situations. So your information might not be given to you in a table. It might be a graph, or it might be a scenario, and someone just says it in words. Either way, though, you're trying to identify that starting amount, A, and that multiplier, B. So let's take a look at one more example in a table that doesn't necessarily give us a situation. So in this example, we need the A and the B, as always, in order to write it in this form. A is our initial amount, so if I'm looking at my table, I know that always happens when x is 0. So that would be our A value. We also need our B, our multiplier. Well, when I'm looking at this, I don't really know what I'm multiplying 54 by to get to 36, and 36 by to get to 24. So because I can't really tell what it is that I'm doing, to find our B value, we're going to take one Y value, doesn't matter which one you start with, and divide it by the one immediately before it. So if I do 36 divided by 54, and you can turn this into a decimal, or you can leave it as a fraction if you want to, it doesn't matter. But when I leave it as a fraction, this ends up being 2 thirds. So my B value is 2 thirds, which shows me that it's decay, which makes sense, right? Because I'm decreasing at a slower rate as I go. So now that we have our A and we have our B, we can just write our final equation, y equals 24 times 2 thirds to the power of x. Now let's take a look at one more where we're missing another piece of information. So we have a table again. We need to identify our initial value and our base. Well, when I'm looking at my table, I don't see an x value of 0. So, so far, I don't really have my initial value, so I'm going to have to wait on that one. 
my base, though, I'm looking for my multiplier. Well, 1 times 5 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. So because that repeated multi multiplier is a 5, I know that's my base. We're going to use this to help us find my initial value. If I'm looking at my table, I need to get to where x is 0. So it would be up there. So if to go up my table like this, well, I guess it's down if visually, whatever, to go from here to here, I'm multiplying by 5. So to go backwards, I would really be dividing by 5. So if I go backwards and divide 1 by 5, I would get a fifth. So now I can see that my a value would be 1 fifth. So our equation would be y equals 1 fifth times 5 to the power of x.